Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you, yes, you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today's part 36 of the AI series where we're gonna take a look at how to make nav mesh agents open doors whenever they need to go through them. In a lot of games, especially older games, AI was just too stupid to open up doors. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to make them a little bit smarter where they can use that door. What we're not going to do is implement an animation where an AI will walk up to a door, grab the door handle, turn it, open it, and then walk through. That's a little bit out of scope with this one. We're just gonna make the doors open whenever the nav mesh agent wants to go through that door. I will talk towards the end of the video about some guidance on how you could make a nav mesh agent do that whole opening door process, but it's not covered in this video. I've gotta give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. Every single one of you helps this channel reach more people, which means more people are making their game development dreams become a reality. If you wanna become a supporter, you can go to patreon.com slash Academy, get your name up here on the screen on the GitHub repos and get a voice shout out starting at the silver tier and some other cool perks too. Speaking of those silver tier supporters, I've got Raphael, Andrew Bowen, and Gerald Anderson. I am incredibly grateful for your support. Thank you. I have a relatively large scene here with a bunch of walls and doors. You'll see that if I bake the nav mesh, the doors are excluded from the build and the triggers are also not considered. This is done with collect objects children on the nav mesh surface and excluding the door trigger layer that has all the door triggers on it. It's important that we have it set up this way because we want the nav mesh agent to path through the doors and then have the doors open for the nav mesh agent. If we take a look at the door, we'll see that it has a nav mesh modifier that is ignore from build, a door script, and a nav mesh obstacle that is turned off. We want the obstacle on there because we want once the door is opened for it to be considered as part of the geometry that is considered on the nav mesh. So that way we don't have nav mesh agents walking through the doors. Let's open up Visual Studio and the door script. At the very beginning, we'll add a required component type of nav mesh obstacle. We'll make a private nav mesh obstacle obstacle. A public bool is open and that'll be false by default. A couple of private serialized fields, a float speed that will set to be one by default. It's gonna be how fast the door opens. A float rotation amount, set that to 90F. That's the number of degrees we want the door to open. And a float forward direction, set that to be zero by default. We're gonna compare the dot product of the player's location to the door's forward and open the door away from the player or the nav mesh agent based on this value. We'll add three private variables that are not serialized, a vector three start rotation, a vector three forward, and a coroutine animation coroutine. You might think the forward's a little bit weird and we'll get to that in just a second when we do the awake function. Where we'll first get a reference to the obstacle with obstacle equals get component nav mesh obstacle. We're gonna configure this obstacle to make sure it's set up correctly with obstacle carve only stationary to be false, obstacle carving to be the value of is open and obstacle enable to be the value of is open. We're then gonna set the start rotation to be the transform rotation Euler angles and we're gonna set forward to transform dot right. And that's because the doors that I've modeled here have their forward pointing into the door frame, which isn't particularly useful when we're trying to compare the location of the player to this forward. So I'm gonna choose right as the forward that we're gonna use whenever we compare the dot product of the player's location in this forward. And once we start doing that, we'll talk a little bit more about what the dot product is and how it works. We'll then define public void open that accepts a vector three, that's the user position. We'll check if it's not open, then we'll also check if the animation coroutine is not null, we'll stop that animation coroutine if it's not. And then we'll do float dot equals vector three dot, passing in the forward first, and then the direction towards that player, which is user position minus transform dot position dot normalized. And to give just a really quick explanation of what the dot product does is given the particular forward that we've passed in here, the second vector that we pass in, which we're using the normalized direction towards the player, this will give us a number between negative one and one, indicating where in relation to this forward the player is. This is really useful because negative one means they're directly behind this forward and one means they're directly in front of this forward. This allows us to do exactly what we were talking about earlier, is determine whether the player is in front or behind the door, and then we can open the door away from the player. We'll then say animation coroutine equals start coroutine, do rotation open, passing in that dot product. We'll go ahead and define that do rotation open with private i enumerator do rotation open, that accepts a float. We're gonna call it forward amount instead of dot, because we're gonna compare that to the forward direction here in a second. First, we'll define a quaternion start rotation to be the transform dot rotation. We'll define a quaternion end rotation, but we won't assign it a value yet because we wanna first check if the forward amount is greater than or equal to the forward direction. So that forward amount is that dot product we calculated and the forward direction is that variable that we have defined at the class level set to zero by default, which for most cases is probably the value you want. And if it is greater than the forward direction, then we're gonna say end rotation equals quaternion dot Euler, passing in a new vector 
factor 3 with start rotation x, start rotation y minus the rotation amount for the y, and start rotation dot z for the z. In the case where forward amount is less than the forward direction, what we're going to do is the same thing, just start rotation dot y plus rotation amount instead of minus rotation amount. We'll then scroll down a little bit, set is open to true, define a float time to be zero and save while time is less than one, transform dot rotation equals quaternion dot slurp, that's spherical lerp, it's much like lerp, just in a spherical fashion. We'll pass in the start rotation, the end rotation, and the time. We'll then yield return null and set time to be plus equals time dot delta time times that speed. So the higher speed values will make this open and close much more quickly. And the last thing we'll do on this function is once we fully open that door, we're going to set obstacle dot enable to be true and set obstacle dot carving to also be true. This is the key part where we're going to turn on that obstacle, make it carve the nav mesh so that way it acts as a wall and our nav mesh agents will not be able to travel through it. Let's go ahead and do the inverse for closing. So we'll define a public void close. We'll check if the animation coroutine is not equal to null, stop it if it's not, and set the animation coroutine to be start coroutine do rotation close. In this case, we don't need to calculate the dot product because we're just going to go back to that original rotation. So let's go ahead and define that do rotation close, private enumerator do rotation close. We'll set the obstacle carving to be false and obstacle enabled to be false. We'll define a quaternion start rotation to be transform.rotation, a quaternion end rotation that we'll define as quaternion.euler passing the start rotation. That's the original rotation that we had that we assigned on awake. We'll then set is open to be false and do the same thing that we did above just in reverse where we define float time equals zero while time is less than one transform.rotation equals quaternion.slurp passing the start and the end rotation and the time yield return null and set time to be plus equals time.delta time times speed. Let's open up the door trigger. We'll put a private serialized field door call it door, and private int agents in range and set that to zero. We'll define on trigger enter that accepts a collider other, and it's called whenever rigid body enters this trigger collider. We'll check if other dot try get component, accepting a nav mesh agent, saying out nav mesh agent agent. If that returns true, that means there is a nav mesh agent on this collider. And we'll say agents in range plus plus, incrementing that value, and say if not door is open, then we will open that door with door.open passing the other transform position because we only want to open that door if it's not already open. We're going to do the exact same thing in reverse on the on trigger exit to make the door automatically close whenever the agent has left the range. If you don't want that behavior, you can just not implement this function. We will decrement the agents in range if we're going to check if the door is open, then we're going to close that door. The last super important thing here is that we also check that the agents in range is equal to zero. We don't want this door to automatically close whenever any agent leaves. We only want it to close after all of the agents have left the trigger. Otherwise, we're going to end up with agents trying to walk through a door that is closed. If we hop back to the Unity editor, I'm going to select every door trigger in my scene because I didn't use a prefab like I should have and drag the door that corresponds to that trigger to that door reference. If I'd used a prefab for the door frame, then I'd only have to do this one time. I'm kind of skipping over the click to move functionality that I've already implemented because I've done that a bunch of times in the AI series. You can check out AI series part one where we first implemented that. It's just raycasting from the camera onto a specific layer, in this case floor, which is what the gray floor is on and setting the agent destination to whatever point we hit. We don't need to change any of our configurations because the default values we set are pretty good. So we'll click play and as I approach the door, once my nav mesh agent reaches into the trigger, we'll see that the door automatically opens and once I move past, it will automatically close. And we'll see that the door becomes an obstacle. I can't make my nav mesh agent walk through it. They will walk around it. That's why the obstacle was a really important component that we enable. You'll also see that the nav mesh is carved whenever they're open, but as soon as it starts closing, it stops carving. It's not super complicated to get this basic working where the doors automatically open and close. If you want the agent to play an animation, that's when it gets a little bit more complicated. For some guidance on that, what you could do is on the door trigger, disable the nav mesh agent whenever they enter if there's only one agent there, so that way you have one agent responsible for opening up that door. Make them play some animation, move them so to the point where they're gonna grab the door handle, open the door, and then once all of that is done, you re-enable the nav mesh agent and have them go back to whatever the point they were going to. And I think that's why a lot of games don't have their AI able to open doors. It's a lot more of a tricky topic than just having them automatically open or just having an AI too dumb to open those doors. If you got value out of this video or the AI series, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. There's new videos posted every Tuesday, and I'll see you next week.